it is globalized world which is now dominating more and more by technology and we are talking about entering the fourth industrial age which would mean that everything would be virtually using technology all kind of technology with a blockchain internet of things big data all of that will dominate the day to day activities of the world including agriculture in fact agriculture will be more and more using artificial intelligence and everything else as we go along but point is in this globalized world which is going to be dominated by technology can we survive without food we can produce food by using better technology but still food is necessary and if you need food you cannot have food without agriculture you cannot manufacture food in laboratories you can do laboratory testing you cannot manufacture food in factories people think nowadays that you can produce food in factories because there is the people living in urban areas they think milk is produced somewhere in factory because i get it in the abul pack tetra pack it must be produced in factory somewhere but milk cannot be produced in factory food cannot be produced in factory it can be processed in fact but cannot be produced so it has to be produced in the field and if you have to produce in the field you must keep in mind that with best of technology if the person who is going to produce that food the farmer if he is not motivated agriculture can never succeed anywhere in the world farmer who does in india they work all the time in the field in us they hardly work in the field because only 2% of the global us population is working as farmer they are completely entire thing is done by the supply chain it is in technology but farmer has to be at the heart of agriculture and those who are forward on that will never succeed in making feeding the population of the world we are 7.5 7.6 billion people to be fed if we don't keep farmer in mind we never succeed and for success of farmer we must get income how can farmer ever do anything if he doesn't get anything in his pocket you can give lecture and you are a great provider of food to people annadata but he said annadata i am fine but mera annadata socho give me something to begin with therefore for the first time the prime minister of india narendra modi ji thought about the idea of focusing agriculture from farmers perspective because agriculture can be seen from technology perspective agriculture can be seen from the market perspective but agriculture cannot be done without keeping farmer in and therefore like education you can think about education from any perspective but if you don't keep in mind education from teacher perspective and student perspective education can never succeed because one is a recipient one is a provider teacher provides education and student receives education so farmer has to be at the heart of agriculture how can a farmer produce more if he produces more price is our agriculture falls and therefore farmer has a double benefit that are produce more and now my yield has gone down not yield in terms of production but yield in terms of price realization so we came out and i was a commerce minister i declared it on the first day of commerce minister that will come out with agriculture export policy the first day of commerce minister even before i got to the board in the office wall i said we create agriculture export policy to realize our prime minister vision of doubling farmers income because prices fall we not be able to get anything and why prices fall because consumption will not increase because production is decreased just imagine our friend from fao is here from japan if there is more production of onion are you going to put more onion in your food You cannot eat more onion just because prices are fall. You can eat only as much onion. So therefore, farmer has to have access to global market. Then only farmer will get better income. Therefore, we came out with agriculture export policy. I will tell you, we have already got a potential and have prepared action plan, which Rupala Ji will talk about. 
100 billion dollars of export from agriculture products in the next few years time. Today is about 27 billion dollars. Actually, we can even do more. When I'm saying agriculture, it includes quite a few things. Agriculture, horticulture, dairy, fisheries, and meat. All fine. All put together, we can have an export of at least 100 billion dollars. When with the 100 billion dollars, is export that will be recorded in the Commerce Ministry data. But who will get those 100 billion dollars? 100 billion dollars will go into the farmer's pocket. If farmers get 100 billion dollars in their pocket, what will he do? He will get more, more motivated, he will produce more, and he will actually be able to harness the benefit of doing more. And therefore, the farmer's income will go, productivity go, and improve agriculture. Same thing will happen. My friend from Africa, I will tell him, even Africa is sitting here. I could see some friends from Nepal. It can happen in Nepal. But to do that, we must integrate the local agriculture to global market. Therefore, using highest sanity and physiotherapy standards are very important. You cannot export things just because I want to export. The importer. The consumer in that country will have to eat it, so the standards have to be very high. We have prepared a plan for it. We have involved all 29 states in it. We already identified the clusters from where which can be exported to which country and how can we create hubs so that it can be exported. And then also, I luckily, I was at the same time, I was the aviation minister. So we have created cargo policy, air cargo policy. Where we can airlift such cargo and export it to other countries. Because you know, most of the agriculture producers are perishable, and if you don't export them in the right time, you'll never get a price. In fact, vegetables in Europe they come to Africa, and there are certain standards that by the time you pluck it from the farm and by the time it reaches the supermarket, how much time it should take. So that the person can eat as fresh a vegetable as possible. So we have to have proper end-to-end -end issues involved in it. And therefore, I'm very happy that you're discussing this. I'm not going to talk more about it because, as I said, when my dear friend and a senior leader and someone who understands this better than anybody else, Mr. Pushyam of Rupala is here. For those who are from abroad, he's one of the senior leaders as well as understand everything. And you know, his name is right. Because normally, Purushottam, his parents knew what he's going to do. So they knew that he's the best person. That's the Purushottam, the best is the person. So he's already there as the best person available when you speak about it. So therefore, I would not speak longer than this. My throat also is bad today. Therefore, actually, I just came here only because I didn't want to lose it. I am a cooperator myself. I have worked and as grassroots cooperative as possible to district cooperatives, to state cooperatives, to national cooperatives, also the international cooperative. I was the chairman of the largest cooperative bank when I was 31. So I worked in all aspects of cooperative, whether primary agriculture societies, whether it is processing societies, all kinds of cooperatives. So I am a product of cooperatives and I therefore have a passion for cooperatives. Therefore I am not going to speak about that today because of my but I am very happy about this program. And I would request you, my friends who are organizing, that this kind of program is very good because it creates awareness and creates acceptability among the stakeholders. But I think one day, oh, we must have a round table of smaller number of people, chaired by my dear friend Rupalati, where we can discuss the strategies for actually making it happen. Otherwise, what happens in one some of the events, people come and go away. This is a very good program, we are very happy. But nothing happened after that. So I think we should do that and my dear friend, who is a senior leader of our farming community as well as my colleague in the party, from UP is also here. We will sit and we will and we will strategize as to what needs to be done to make it happen. I can tell you one thing. For cooperatives, the future is very bright. And when I am saying this, People will say, what I talk about, there are problems in cooperatives. There are problems in everything. But cooperatives 
have the greatest advantage which no other sector has because we work as close to people as possible. We understand the market better and therefore cooperatives can do a far better job in terms of sourcing the material because that is very are close to the people. We can sell the product to the people because we are closer to the marketplace and we can succeed. But to succeed is not just going to happen because we have proximity to the market as well as to people. But by using best management techniques and technology. We will do that as we go along. But all the best to you and congratulations for my friends for organizing the event. And once again, I on behalf of all of you, congratulate Uparati because we have been last five years more or less. Or less than five years, but you are doing looking after the portfolio of agriculture, trying to implement the vision of a prime minister. In fact, when our prime minister was the chief minister of Gujarat, Mr. Uparati was the president of the party in Gujarat. He has worked as a team with the prime minister since then. And so he is a senior leader. But he is very down to us. He is not so of his leadership. So nobody believes that he is a great leader. But he is a fantastic leader. And therefore I really leave it at this. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Download Tarang online radio app from Google Play Store. You are listening to Tarang Devotional Online Radio.